you need to be able to understand the difference between elements, compounds and mixtures. First of all, we need to introduce the idea, however, that everything is made up of something called atoms. So this pen is made up of atoms, the piece of paper is made up of atoms, the air around us is made up of atoms, every single thing on this planet is made up of atoms. And they are like the building blocks of everything. Everything is made up of atoms. There are over a hundred different types of atoms and a type of atom is called an element. And all of the different elements are organised together in this, the periodic table. So for example the smallest atom and therefore the smallest element is hydrogen but you can see there are loads of other different types of atoms so therefore loads of other different elements so hydrogen is an element as is helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen etc. So all of the different elements are displayed here. So hydrogen would be the smallest building block and as you go along the periodic table, the atoms or the building blocks just get that little bit bigger. So that will help us understand the next three words, which are elements, compounds and mixtures. So as we said, the elements are in the periodic table, so they are different types of atoms. So they are a different types of atoms. So if you are an element, you are made up of only one type of atom. So elements are a substance made up of only one type of atom. So for example, one that you might all recognise would be oxygen. Oxygen is only made up of oxygen atoms. Another one maybe that you might recognise a metal called aluminium. Aluminium is only made up of one type of atom which is aluminium. And these all will be found on the periodic table so if you're an element you are found on the periodic table and we can see here we've got the two we were talking about oxygen one type of atom and aluminium another type of atom if we were to draw the elements we would draw things that only have the same shaped particle in them for example this would be an element because it only has the same type of purple circle. Similarly, this would be an element because again, it only is made up of one type of atom. This is also an element because as you can see, it's only got one type of atom. It doesn't matter that they're joined together in this one and they're not in this one but as long as they are only made up of one type of atom and are therefore only one type of shape in this in these diagrams they are an element this for example could be oxygen because you have two oxygen atoms going around together but they are the same type so this could be one oxygen atom, this could be another oxygen atom. Going back to our definition, a substance made up of only one type of atom, they're only made up of oxygen, so it's an element. Now in fact oxygen does go round in pairs, and that's why you'll hear it called O2, which we'll come on to later about these little numbers associated with atomic symbols. 
Moving on to compounds then. Compounds are a little bit different. Compounds are substances made up of more than one type of atom and they are bonded together. So there's two key things that we need to think about here. So a compound is a substance made up from two or more elements or types of atoms. That's the first bit. The next bit, chemically bonded together. So they're two or more elements, but this is the important bit as well, that they have to be chemically bonded together. That's the scientific words for meaning that they're joined together. So different examples of compounds that we can see would be something that looks a little bit like this. So rather than one type of circle this time, we've got two elements, two different types of atom chemically bonded together. So we've got the orange striped circle and the purple circle and they are joined and bonded together. Another example here, again we've got two different types of elements, so we've got the green circles, that's one type of element, and we've got the orange circle, that's another element, and they are bonded together. And finally on this example you can see that there are three different elements, three different types of atoms bonded together. We've got an orange stripy circle, we've got a purple circle and we've got a red circle bonded together. So all these three things here are different examples of compounds. To name some examples that you might know, this for example here could represent water. Water has the chemical formula H2O. So as this diagram suggests, these could be atoms of hydrogen for the H, this bit here which is hydrogen, and this could be the atom of oxygen, which is capital O for oxygen. So this is a compound because it has two different types of atoms, so two elements chemically bonded together. This example here could also be something that you recognise. It could be salt. Now salt has a scientific name which is Na which stands for sodium and Cl which stands for chlorine. So in this example we could have the purple circle representing Na for sodium and the orange circle representing Cl and they are two different elements chemically bonded together. So if we link this back to the periodic table that we looked at, you've got sodium over here, and this is chemically bonding with a different element, chlorine over here. Okay, so you've got sodium here bonding to chlorine, so two different elements chemically bonding together is called a compound. Finally then, we need to look at mixtures. Now mixtures are different again. A mixture would be something whereby you have different elements or different compounds not chemically bonded together. So a mixture is a substance which is made up 
from different elements and or compounds and this is the important bit not chemically bonded together so where is the compound you had things bonding together this time a mixture is a substance made up from different elements and or compounds not chemically bonded together. So this is our first example of a mixture here. We've got two elements. We've got the purple circles and the orange circles, but they are not bonding with each other. So you've got the purple ones here, the orange ones here, and they're not bonding together. So that's an example of a mixture of elements. Our second example here we've got one compound and one element as a mixture. For example this you should know by now on its own would be an element because it's only made up of green circles, only made up of one type of atom. This on its own would be a compound because it's made up of two different elements chemically bonding together. But when they are in the same substance, the element and the compound and other um, molecules of elements and compounds together, and they are not bonding with each other, then they are a mixture. So you can see that here there's no bond between this element and this compound. Here there's no bond between these two and no bonds here. So it's having an element in with a compound mixed up together but not chemically bonding with each other. Our final example, we've got two different compounds. So this compound here, this compound here and this element here, here and here all together but not chemically bonding with each other. So one example of a mixture would be um, salt in water. Okay, so salty water would be an example of a mixture. Because what you have with salty water is you've got some salt particles, so going back to our Na bonded to a Cl, for example, our salt, okay, which would be NaCl, and we would have water particles, so we'd have H2O. So we'd have the salt in with the H2O in the salty water, but the salt and the H2O would not be bonding together. They'd be in a mixture together with the salt and the water, but importantly, they wouldn't be bonding with each other. So when you don't have a chemical bond between the different compounds, then that is called a mixture.